We're back with former Attorney General Eric Holder. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. um, are you ever going to run for office? Um, I don't know. You know, I'm focused on this National uh, Democratic Redistricting Committee. That's the focus of all my political activities at, uh, at this point. I want to make sure that um, we repel these attacks on our democracy, try to end political gerrymandering to the extent that we can. Um, and then, you know, I'll see. Uh, I'm not, you know, saying no at, at this point, but that's not the, not, not, not the focus of, uh, of what I'm concentrating on now. You're not working on the redistricting project because it's part of a larger project in terms of you getting back into public life in an no. electoral way? No, I, I think, and I'm not being hyperbolic here, I, I think our democracy is under attack. Uh, if you look at uh, gerrymandering and the way in which uh, we have a system where politicians are picking their voters as opposed to citizens picking their representatives, if you look at the, um, the way in which these voter suppression laws um, have been passed, we're coming to a, be a country that is inconsistent with our founding ideals and the notion of one man, one vote is really under attack. And so I'm bound and determined to do all that I can to uh, reverse that which has happened, especially over the last uh, decade. I think you and President Obama surprised a lot of people in early January when you announced that you were going to be working on this project together right. on redistricting, um, in part because redistricting and, and gerrymandering is an old political problem. It's not novel, and each party has used it uh, to their own advantage in different ways in different times, and they've been, people have sort of been better or worse at it in different parts of the countries and in different eras. Are you and President Obama working on this because you want Democrats to compete better at this time at the old project of redistricting and gerrymandering? Or are you trying to eliminate it in general in a good yeah. government kind of way? Yeah, I mean, I'd say a couple things. First, the, Princeton did a study and said that what the Republicans did in 2011 when they drew the lines was the worst um, partisan gerrymandering of the last 50 years. What we are engaged in, and this sounds kind of inconsistent, is, is a partisan attempt at good government. All I want to have done in 2021 after the census is that the lines drawn be drawn in a, in, a, in a fair way and make this a battle between Republican ideas, Democratic ideas, liberal ideas, progressive ideas, and conservative um, ideas. If that is the case, if that's the contest that we have, I think Democrats will do um, just fine. But what I do not want to have happen is for this to be a successful effort and then have Democrats in 2021 do what Republicans Republicans did in 2011. That is not what this project is all about. So do you, you feel like Republicans kind of ran the table on this during the Obama administration when they did their red map project in 2010? That set yeah. them up in a way that was right. that tilted the playing field. What you want is to tilt it back and then fix the system? Yeah, tilt it back, but get it to just fair. Not tilt it back to favor Democrats. Um, just get it to a place where uh, the lines are drawn in such a way that people truly have a choice, have more competitive districts at the congressional level, to have representation uh, at the state level that's consistent with the wishes of the voters. I mean, if you look at Wisconsin, for instance, it's about a 50-50 state. Mm -hmm. um, Republicans control two-thirds of the, the, the state assembly. And when you control for everything else, it's really just a function of the way in which the lines were drawn uh, in 2011. So I know that in this project you're working on um, ballot initiatives in right. some places where they're going to try to do nonpartisan redistricting. Right. You're working on, um, obviously, public public consciousness and awareness around these things. You're working on uh, litigation strategy. You're also working on supporting individual Democratic candidates in state legislatures whose election would be key in terms right. of whether what control of redistricting would look like there. That's a comprehensive strategy that I feel like does get at all the different elements that make mm -hmm. this sort of make or break this as a strategy. What I don't get is why this effort is going to succeed. I feel like I've heard so much Democratic hot air on, we got to work in the states, we got to work in redistricting. I feel like there's been so many projects uh, launched that yeah. we're going to do this yeah. that never really seemed to. Why is yours going to have traction? Well, I think ours is organized, first off. It is also the only thing that is within the Democratic Party that has at its sole responsibility the, this whole notion of redistricting. And then I think the other reality is we're in the Trump era. And uh, I, I think people have seen over the past decade um, what partisan gerrymandering on the Republican side has meant, where you have state legislatures that pass these crazy gun laws, these um, anti-choice laws, these voter suppression laws that are not necessarily supported by the people in those states. We have seen a dysfunctional Congress. 
uh, where people come to Congress, especially on the Republican side, and because of gerrymandering, you're in a safe seat, and you're more worried about being challenged by a person on the right. You're worried about being primaried as opposed to the general election. And that means that you have dysfunction in Washington because people don't necessarily have to talk to one another. They don't have to compromise. In fact, that's a bad thing for somebody who is in a gerrymandered district. So I think that dissatisfaction with um, the dysfunction, the concern about what Trump, um, the Trump administration has been doing, and the way in which this thing is constructed within the party, and the support, frankly, that we have gotten, and having You've raised the, more than ten million dollars yeah, in the first half of the year, yeah, and having the former president of the United States um, support this, I think this can be successful. I have one last question for you. Will you stay right there? Sure. We'll be right back with Eric Holder, former Attorney General. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.